Now that we have our modules configured, we're ready to take a look at the live switcher. Now, the live switcher interface is right here, and we have a program bus, we have a preview bus, and we have a utility row. And then here on the control surface, you can see that you have the same layout. You've got a program bus, you've got the preview bus, and the utility row right here at your fingertips. Now, of course, as we have inputs coming into the TriCaster, we can instantly switch to them. And you can use the program bus, and you can instantly switch to any input simply by hitting that button on the program bus on the control surface. Now, your other option, of course, is going to be to be able to preview this input before you switch to it. So any input can be brought up on the preview bus. And then it, you can switch to it either by hitting the take button. And again, you've got a take button here on the control surface. You also have a take button right here on the interface. And you also have a take button right here next to the background area of the transition area. So any of these, that take button, this take button, or the take button here on the control surface will allow you to take between or cut between those two inputs, whatever's on preview and program. Now, of course, you also have the ability to do transitions. And the transitions are located right down here. And you have a fade. And of course, right on the control surface, there's a button for a fade. So anytime you want to do a fade, you can simply hit fade on the control surface, or you can select fade right here. And then your auto button is going to do a nice cross fade between preview and program. Now, the TriCaster comes with a wide variety of effects. And those effects are available right here. And you can, there are many, many more effects than what we have loaded right here. Uh, but just to give you an idea, I'm going to go ahead and click on one of those effects and then hit the auto button. You can see we have a nice organic dissolve. Now, you can use the mouse to get from effect to effect. But if you are using a control surface, you also have the selector knob right here. And you can twist that knob. And by twisting that knob, you're going to select different transitions from the bank of transitions that you currently have loaded. So you can simply select the one that you want, hit the Auto button, select your next transition, hit the Auto button, so on and so forth. Now you have the ability to control the speed of these effects. And right here on the interface, you've got a little pop down that allows you to go slow, medium, or fast. You also have a rate knob here on the control surface, and the rate knob will allow you to, uh, you can twist that knob and it will allow you to go in between the presets of slow, medium, and fast. You can go faster than fast, slower than slow, or anywhere in between any of the presets. But if you want to use the presets, you can also use this knob as a button. So by pressing on this button or on the knob as a button, it will snap between the three presets that are available, slow, medium, and fast, for the speed of your transition. You also have the ability to run these effects either forward or in reverse. And you can set that up a couple of ways. They're going to default to the forward mode. So if you just load an effect, let's just load up an effect and run it, it's going to run in the forward mode. That's running a little fast. I'm going to hit my rate button here and slow it down just a little bit. So now it's running at the speed that I want. But to run it in reverse, there's a couple of things I could do. You can select the effect and come over here to this gear. And the gear allows you to configure the effect. And you can run it in forward or reverse. And you also have the ability to ping pong the effect. And that's going to run the effect one direction the first time you run it, and then the opposite direction the next time you run it. And it's going to continue to ping pong back and forth, running forward and backward each time you run the effect. Now, these settings right here are not global. They're on an effect by effect basis. So you can go through and say, I want all these effects to run forward. I want this one to run in reverse. I want these two to ping pong. And you can customize it the way that you feel is necessary for your production. Now, you have a pop down here. And this allows you to load a new effect. So again, if you select an effect in here that you want to uh, change, you can select it and then click the gear, use the pop up, and come down here to Browse. This will open up the media browser to the transitions that are available. And again, these are all directories full of transitions. And there are a wide variety of them available. So you simply uh, find the transition you want to use. You can select it, hit OK. And that's now the transition that's loaded into that spot. You can see we now have our little um, burst fade going on there, which looks really nice. 
Now you do also have a physical T-bar. You have a physical T-bar here on the control surface, and you have a virtual T-bar right here in the interface. So you can grab the virtual T-bar with the mouse. You can run effects that way. You can grab the physical T-bar here on the control surface. You can manually run effects that way as well. One thing that I want to show you is if you're looking at the interface and we're using a control surface, right now the T-bar on the control surface is up, the T-bar in the interface is up. If I pull the T-bar on the control surface down, it runs the effect, but notice that the T-bar on the interface is snapped back to the up position. So every time you do an effect, it's going to snap back to the up position on the interface. So it is possible that the T-bar on the control surface is in a different position than the T-bar in the interface. Don't let that throw you. Just know that every time you run an effect, that the T-bar in the interface is going to snap back to the top position. Now you also have the ability to delegate what this T-bar is going to be doing. And again, on the interface right up here, we have four buttons that allow us to delegate what the T-bar is going to be doing. They're background, DSK1, DSK2, and FTB, or fade to black. Now there are two downstream keyers available in the switcher as well. And they're right over here, DSK1 and DSK2. And it's important to know that when you think about this, you're thinking about video in layers. So there are basically three layers that you're dealing with here. The background layer, DSK1, and DSK2. The background layer is whatever is happening between preview and program and any transition that's going on between them. So my background layer, if I'm in the middle of a transition, you can see we've got both of those sources on the screen at the same time. That's all part of background. The transition, preview, and program all make up our background layer. Now there are two more layers, DSK1 and DSK2. And for DSK1, we're going to go ahead and select. You've got a pop-up right here that allows you to select what you want to use as the source. We're going to use stills as the source for DSK1. And let's go to our stills bin here. And we're going to load up a uh, graphic that's got transparency or alpha channel in it. That's great. Now, if you hit the take button on the DSK, it's going to go ahead and bring that DSK up live. Now, let's set up the second DSK. Again, you can use the pop-up right here to choose the source. I'm going to choose titles. I'm going to go to the titles area and choose a title that we're going to use. And now we're ready to check that second DSK. Again, we're just going to hit take. And we see that we've got our Rex Olson underlay, or overlay, I should say, going on there, our lower third graphic. So the two downstream keys that we have available right now are our title and our logo there in the center of the screen. Now, again, we've got the ability to use the T-bar in different ways. So when it's set to background and you use the T-bar, you're going to transition from whatever's on preview to whatever's on program exactly the way you would think it would work. If you delegate the T-bar to DSK1, now this can be done either by clicking on it here on the interface or you also have the delegates right here in the transition area. So background, DSK1, and DSK2. So if I bring up DSK1, the T-bar now brings up DSK1. And I don't like that transition, so I'm going to pick a new one. So now you can see that we're flying DSK1 in and out with the T-bar. But the other thing that I want you to notice is I want to take a look at the preview monitor. So if I set this up for background, and let's take our DSK out, you'll notice that the preview monitor now shows me what's on preview. Because a background switch is going to switch whatever's on preview to what's on program. And that makes sense. Now, if I delegate the T-bar to DSK1, notice that the background video stays the same and it's just showing me the DSK in preview. That's because this is a true look ahead preview and it's going to show you exactly what you're going to get when you either hit the auto button or you use that T-bar. So because we have DSK delegated, that's the only thing the T-bar is going to do. So the background video won't change. Only the DSK will get added to program. So again, the true look ahead preview is showing us that. And when we execute that transition, that's exactly what we get. Now, if I delegate DSK2, notice DSK1 is not going to change. DSK2 is going to get added. That's what preview is showing us. It's showing us the background is going to stay the same and the logo is going to stay the same. The only thing that's going to change is DSK2 is going to get added. We execute that and we see DSK2 gets added. 
Now you can multiply delegate things. So I can hold down DSK2 and press DSK1 at the same time. Or on the interface, you could click on DSK1, hold down control and click on DSK2. And now both of them are delegated. And again, because both DSKs are now active, Preview is showing me the background video with no DSKs because it's going to take both of them away when we execute. As you see, now both of them get taken away. So it's a true look ahead preview as to exactly what's going to be happening. Let's say you want to do a transition and bring up both downstream keys at the exact same time. Well, you can hit background, hold it down, DSK1 and DSK2. Now all three buttons are lit up. And again, if we look at preview, we can see the background video is going to change and both DSKs are going to come up when we execute. And again, I pull the T-bar and that's exactly what we get. We get a background transition in both DSKs. Again, if I run the T-bar again, we get a background transition in both DSKs. Now, of course, you could run this the first time and then you can say, now I just want to affect DSK1 and take that out by itself. Now I just want to affect DSK2 and take that out by itself. Now I just want to do a background transition back over to the studio. So it's a very flexible and powerful system allowing you to delegate what's going to happen when you use the T-bar. And again, that can be done either from the delegate buttons on the control surface or from the interface by using the control key and multiply selecting the buttons above the T-bar. Now, the one button that we haven't talked about yet is fade to black. And it's right here above the T-bar, but it's also here on the control surface. And you need to be careful and you need to understand fade to black. Fade to black is going to get rid of everything. So let's say we have both of our DSKs active. Bring them both up. And I click on the fade to black button. Notice that preview goes black. Fade to black here is going to fade everything. It's going to fade not only the video, it's going to fade the overlays, and it would also fade out any audio that was active at the time. Now the thing that you have to realize is, once you've engaged a fade to black, before you can go back to switching, you have to remove the fade to black. Fade to black is the uppermost layer. We've got background, we've got DSK1, DSK2, and then fade to black covers everything. So if that's active, you're never going to see anything. A mistake that might be made would be we have fade to black active here on the control surface. And now I say, oh, now I want to switch back to my show. So I go to background. If you look at preview, you'll see that it's showing you a true look ahead. When you execute that transition, you still have black because fade to black is covering everything. So before you can go back to doing any other type of switch and notice that fade to black is blinking because it knows, hey, you tried to switch to background but I'm still active. So again, hit fade to black, execute that to remove that overlay on top of all of our other layers. Now go back to background and start doing the switch the way that you think you would normally. Now there are also independent controls for the DSKs. You don't have to delegate the T-bar to be able to bring them up and down. On the interface, we have controls right next to the DSKs, an auto and a take right here. And again, that's going to bring up uh, a take is going to cut to that overlay and an auto is going to use whatever transition you have selected in these transitions. And again, you can choose any of the transitions that you can use to go from one video input to another. Again, it's the same process. You would click on it, you would click on the gear, you would go to browse and you can load up any transition that you want to use. And then the auto button is going to use that transition to bring that DSK on and off. And then up here again, you've got take and you've got auto available here as well. Again, you've got the ability to change the speed of that transition, just like you do on the background. And again, these pop-ups allow you to choose what the source is going to be for that particular downstream key. There is another way to choose a source for the downstream keyers, and that is from the control surface. So as we look at the control surface, we've got program preview, and as I said before, there's a utility bus. And this utility bus can be used for a variety of things. It can be set to be the effects row, it can set up to be the source selector for DSK1, the source selector for DSK2, or it can be the selector for what is going out, the auxiliary video output. There's a third video output which is configurable, and you can actually tell it what you want to be sending out, that auxiliary video output, right here from the control surface. Now, 
If I select DSK1, I now use these buttons to choose what I want the source for DSK1 to be. So DSK1 is stills, DSK2 is titles, very simple. Now you can use other things for DSKs as well. We can use live video to do picture in picture. We can do full motion overlay. We'll look at that in just a moment. Now on the control surface over here you have controls for manipulating the DSK as well. You've got take DSK1 to bring it up and down. You've got auto for DSK1. You've got take for DSK2, auto for DSK2 right here. Now, another trick is, instead of delegating all three, background, DSK1, and DSK2, if you want to do all three things at one time, I want to bring up both DSKs and I want to do a background transition all at the same time. Instead of delegating them all and doing an auto, you can literally press all three of these buttons at the same time on the control surface. So I've got my auto button, my auto DSK1, my auto DSK2, and I'm just going to hit them all at the same time. It gives me the exact same effect. This can be handy. It can be confusing when you start using these buttons, and it's easy to leave the switcher in a mode that you don't think it's in. For instance, you could have it on DSK1, and you think it's set to background, and you go to pull that switch, and all of a sudden something happened that you didn't expect. So at least when you're starting out, you might just want to leave this on background and just use the manual DSK controls over here and it's a little less confusing. You're not going to be able to make the mistake of leaving the switcher in a mode that you weren't familiar with. Let's go ahead and bring up our DSK-1 here. And I want to show you that you have the ability to control, to crop, to scale, to position, and to rotate any input in the TriCaster in real time, including the downstream keys. So we can take this DSK-1 and use the positioner here on the control surface. There are also controls for positioning on the interface. So right next to the gear where you would go to load up a new effect or to adjust the effect, you've got a crosshair. It's uh, arrows in a cross. And if you click on that, it brings up the positioner tools here in the interface. Notice that the DSK is not active on program out, but I can see it on preview because the positioner tools were brought up. Now the positioning can be done here on preview. We could say we want this to be up here. I want to grab my scale. And again, you do have the ability to grab and drag on individual axes, but you can actually uh, get undesirable results, especially if lock is turned off on scaling. You could distort things. So I usually like to click and drag right on the icons that have the crosshair, the uh, rotation icon, and the magnification icon. And this will uniformly adjust all the axes for you, allowing you to get just the look you're you want. So again, all these adjustments can be made on preview. Now, if you have a control surface, you can do the same thing here. Select DSK1 as the delegate. Again, you're selecting what you want the positioner to control with these buttons. So I want to control DSK1, and as soon as I start manipulating it, it shows up here on preview. And I can set it to where I want it to be, and I can, I can scale by rotating this, just like a volume control, I'm rotating it left and right, the joystick, and then moving the joystick up, down, and left and right. That's for when you're in position and scale. When you go to rotate, now you're going to be rotating, and again, twisting it rotates, moving it up and down rotates, and moving it left and right rotates. And if you get it into a position that is kind of not what you want, you want to start over, you do have a reset button right here that will reset it. But reset only resets the variable that you have selected. So rotate reset will reset the rotation. Position and scale reset will reset position and scale. And of course, crop will reset any cropping that you might have done. So this gives us the ability to say, all right, I want my logo to be up here in the corner. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to auto DSK1. And it appears on program out exactly where I wanted it to be. So everything can be set up on preview, even while you're live. So you get exactly what you want on program out the first time every time.